Yeah, blow the whistle first center pass as we begin this Thursday edition of the Sports Bank Zone with netball. Now, following the Sunshine Girls' third place finish at the most recent World Cup in August 2023, Connie Francis did not renew her contract, opening the door for a new head coach. After a five month process, a former Sunshine Girl herself, Sasha Gay Henry, was given the reins and announced as the new woman in charge last week. This will be Henry's second stint, having worked alongside Marvett Anderson as co-coach for the 2018 Commonwealth Games where the team secured bronze and the Fast Five World Series that same year when Jamaica secured silver, their best ever finish at the tournament. Sasha Gay Henry back in business and back on the sports bank zone, this time not as an analyst, but as the head coach of the Sunshine Girls and the one in a very, very hot season seat. Sasha Gay, how are you? I am wonderful. I am good and I'm very grateful to be here. Tell me about this new role as the head coach of the Sunshine Girls. Is this a position you applied for or did Netball Jamaica reach out to Sasha Gay and say, listen, we want you back because you did such a good job last time? Well, it's a position where I actually applied for the, for the job. I mean, I believe that um, after working with the girls, taking a break, um, learning um, during that period of time that I was away, I definitely believe I could add something, you know, to build on what they have done um, thus far. And they did a great job, you know, in both the Commonwealth Games and the World Cup. So it's just to add and to build on to the legacy that we're all dreaming for. What will you bring to this post that will be so different, if anything? Um, well, let me not say different. It's basically the expertise um, as a coach and as a player, former player myself. Um, you have learned a lot. Um, the experiences from other coaches and all of what you've learned you'll bring to the table with the team behind the team. Yeah. As an individual, and I'm not even speaking about your expertise as a coach now, how are you different, if any at all, from the last time you were in this seat as a co-coach? I mean, in the fact that I had some a few issues. Um, now you've grown to a particular point where you have to adjust to those issues and learn and grow. So with that, I think I am expecting the challenges. Mm -hmm. So I'm growing through that now. And I think that I'm 100% committed in terms of leading the girls and to have a solid team which will, which will um, be on board, hoping that Netball Jamaica will have the resources to put all of those persons on board to help these girls and also the future of Netball. So we're not only looking at the Sunshine Girls, but the pathway mm. for the girls. Yeah. yeah Sasha Gay, I hear beyond the surface of what you're saying that your first stint wasn't as comfortable as you wanted it to be. And I, I gather that you, you, were, you were happy to move away at the point that you did. Um, you just referenced the fact that you think you have matured to a point where you are now more ready yes. to tackle the job now um, than you were then when yes. you were a co-coach. Could you tell us about some of the issues that, that um, existed then that made you uncomfortable? Basically, it was too. We, I, I really don't want to dwell too much on yes. the administrative part, mm -hmm. but definitely it was two reasons, family and administration. But in relation to family, I think they are, it's more structured, so I'm able to leave. Um, in terms of the administration, they had a little needles. I don't really want to dwell on much because um, I think that moving forward, we just need to be as positive as, as we can. So definitely I am expecting a few, few changes into, into the team and I won't say much about the issues that yeah. I had with them. Yeah, I know you don't want to talk too much about the issues, right? But one of the things I understand back in 2018 is that you wanted greater involvement in the selection of the various teams, the selection process. Is Sasha Gay Henry as head coach going to have the leverage, the leeway to select the individuals and teams that she wants to? Well... Fortunately, I was a selector. Now, being a head coach now, mm -hmm. 
I have to leave that position. But the head coach really gets uh, a part of it to make a decision. I mean, the, there was a few things that didn't go right with one particular um, selection process, which was not close to the World Cup. But I must say that the process is much better now because we, as a former selector, the coaches have a say in terms of the team that is on board. Yeah. And so the selectors actually allow her to look at the team yeah. and they get a chance to see, you know, is this suitable, do you like this, yes. And that wasn't the case in, in 2018? Not really. Not really, but uh, as I said, I don't want to dwell yes. on that matter. <laughs> but, but not That's really. It, yes, it was, but it wasn't really that a particular player did not get selected. But yeah, yeah. about the they process. were not even upset. Yes. But it was just the process at that time. All right, yeah. so actually, you just referenced a couple of minutes ago that, as a former player, there are things about the coaching job that would probably make it a little bit easier for you yes. to carry yes. your job out. Of course, like yourself, Connie Francis, the previous coach, was also a, an outstanding international player. What is it about being a former coach that gives you the tools or maybe even an advantage over someone who didn't play internationally, now that you're a coach? Um, well, you actually understand the atmosphere. You understand what it takes to prepare for the big competition. And you know that, I mean, you, you really aspire to go to the top. But you have to try to keep them mentally sound because at any second, all top four teams, you might be on top, as we saw Jamaica being the team that we expected to win the World Cup. So if you lose focus for a second, it can, it can lapse. So you have to keep them under certain regimes in terms of their mental preparation. You have to understand the niggas in terms of their nutrition that will make it better um, in terms of the persons that you would want on board, a psychologist now on board, trying to get a ready strength and conditioning coach, you know, to, to make this job a little bit better. So there, are, there are different things as a, as a player and as a coach we saw where we could have improved on. So definitely we'll just try and work our best, you know, to see whatever challenges come up we will take on and to ensure that we have a good team. The Australian defensive coach who was a part of the setup and um, by, by all indications, you know, added some value to the coaching setup. Is he expected to be a part of the system again? Well, for me, I, I believe that if it wasn't broken, don't break it. Yes. So, I mean, that's a part of our um, talks right now, who will be back on board. So for me, definitely, I mean, I am into Rob. We had a lot of sessions together. Mm -hmm. So whenever they had their seminars, I'd be there learning from him also. So it's good to have people on board who are solid. They did well with Connie. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, why not keep them? Yeah. I mean... The, the, the netball purist in Jamaica for decades, Sasha Gay, has been proud about Jamaica being a top four team consistently. Um, hovering between three and four most of the times. Fleetingly, number two in the world a couple of times in the past 10 years or so. But you know how, how Jamaicans are. I mean, you know, you know they're, they're, they're happy that they can be ranked as high as three and four, but you constantly hear this word, a, a word that, yeah, we're tired of being three and four. We need to be number one. Yes. Is, is that a goal of yours? Yes, definitely. I mean, that's a goal of mine, the girls, the association. But we know it's going to take a lot of hard work to get there and definitely it's not just going to be a walkover. It comes down to the last minute of persons really putting in the work from beforehand to make it easier on the day and ensuring that all different facets, as I said, in terms of all the persons that would want to be on board to ensure that um, we, get, we, get, we get the results that we want. Yeah, Sasha Gay, when you look at this current Sunshine Girl setup. I really want to talk about building for the 2027 World Cup because you've already started to speak about that. And it's it's important because it's the World Cup. Yes. And Jamaica desperately wants to win the Netball World Cup. Yes. But when I look at the best players we have, there's a small concern for me. And I wonder from your standpoint just how you see it. So you look at the top players and their current age and the age they are expected to be in three years. And we do have a graphic that I just want to go through quickly mm -hmm. um, in terms of looking at that. Romelda Aiken, 35 years old now. She will be 38 at the time of the next World Cup. Janelle Fowler will be 37. 
Shanice Beckford, 31. Nicole Rochester, 32. Shamira Sterling, 31. Jodian Ward, 32. Kadian Dehaney, 30. Khadija Williams, 32. Those are key players right across the board from attack to the midcourt mm -hmm. to the defense. Mm -hmm. Have you started having the conversations yet to get a feel from these players what their plans are and whether they plan to stick around for 2027? Can I say we have spoken and all of those players are willing to go? Wow. In terms, because they're all on selection. So yeah. it's not a, it's not a walk-in. So they're all on selection. We have, um, we have a currently an A squad here and we have um, a group training now, which is the senior team also. So we have 14 here and we have another set of the A squad. So it is a complementary effort of everyone. So definitely we want to build players because these players will not be here again for the next World Cup. Yeah. I mean, after 2020. Yes. Yes. And yeah. then age age can be a factor. I stopped playing at 36. <laughs> yes. But, but, and but, I'm just saying, Tema Parra from um, New Zealand stopped playing in her 40s. Yes. Yes. I'm just saying, but it all depends on the and age and the longevity. And you could have continued after 36. No, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 but, um... Definitely, you, you, there's a blend. So there's a blend. There will be a blend of both young and the senior players. So yeah. it comes down to the wire, who is really performing. Because you want to really build a capacity in the younger ones. Because you yeah. don't know. We might not even have some of them yeah. for the World Cup, hoping we, we, we can have everybody healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but we don't know what will happen. But definitely, we're preparing the girls here and overseas. I know you left out Rhea too. She's another one yes. that is overseas. Yes, don't, don't, don't. Rhea went to Fast Five last right, year. Right, right. <laughs> and I realize you don't have Shimona. Well, because of her age. So Shimona is so young that right. we're okay. very okay. much okay. expecting okay. for her to, to be, be there in 2027. Okay. So right, right. these are the ones who are going to be over 30 by the time we get to the next World Cup. Um, so let me get clear. So you are saying you've gotten a commitment from these players yes. that they are at least willing to push themselves to right. 2027. Right. Whether they get selected or not is a different thing. Right. That's, that's the take. Because they're all on selection. I mean, we're not... The young ones might just rise, and, yeah. and, and, and the good thing about it now is that we're going to be having a lot of home games. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be putting in these young girls to, to understand the atmosphere and to get used to the playtime, yeah. you know, unlike the others that are overseas who play in a sort the right atmosphere that we'll always play in. So definitely the fact that Netball Jamaica now is looking to have a lot of series coming on board, both, both home and away. It's a good thing for our youngsters to just step in and do a great job. You know, sometimes I wish I could take Paula Thompson and make oh. her about 10 or 15 <laughs> years younger. Um, she could go now. She could continue right now. <laughs> she could. Yes, yes, well, yes. Well, Jamaica could use her in the center court. And that is to take nothing away from the girls who are there because I think they have improved with each passing year um, but it is still a problem the midcourt for Jamaica and I think that the Sunshine girls have lost many matches because of the deficiencies in midcourt how do we fix it I mean you just have to ensure that you try to be as tactical in terms of your preparation and technical in terms of your preparation to getting these girls to understand they will putting them under the pressure that they would be in training and ensuring that they're fit and ready you know, to compete. Do you think it's an area that we can get right by 2027? It's an area, it's an area definitely that we can get right. And it's an area that we must get right. Is it your biggest area of concern when you look at the overall squad? Um, for me, I, I, I love center court. I'm a center court person. Yes, so I are. think for me, maybe it's going to be a plus in terms of, um, you know, putting in the work in that particular area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, um, Sasha Gay, talk to us about the rivals that you will contend with because Jamaica's bid to topple the New Zealand's and Australia's of this world would mean that you have to study them carefully. We were planning to have a chat with Tracy Ann Griffith, the umpire, who was at the Vitality Nations Cup in England a couple of weeks ago where you had Australia, England, New Zealand and, and Uganda. Right. Um, I'm not sure how much you looked at that series. But your job right now will include taking a close look at the, the Australians and the New Zealanders and the English team, the, the England Roses, they England call them. England Roses, yes, right. Yes. Um, and what they are doing strategically right. for you to topple them. Right. How, how much do you plan to see a lot of their games mm -hmm. 
and study what they are doing to mm -hmm. topple them because I'm sure they're looking at the Jamaicans. And I realize you leave out Uganda, the Africans, they are right on us. So, I mean, they are yeah. playing exceptionally well. Yes. So, um, well, they were a part of the vitality. Yes, I think they, they finished were. fourth, but yes. they did give um, New, New Zealand, Zealand a run for the third yes, place playoff. Yes, yeah. yes, and they did give um, Australia a good push yeah. too, and too. So, I mean, for us right now, it's just to ensure that we have footage of all the games that they play, yes. you know, and try to see how best we can look at what are the things that they do best, how they counteract, what type of pressure they um, use on defense, and in terms of how can how can we create strategies to stop their attack. Yeah, yeah I, so. I want to, I want to get from you as well, Sasha Gay. The thinking behind the professional players now in the Jamaican setup, get, get, getting an opportunity to play in the Suncorp League because obviously, and you just referenced the fact that these girls who are playing in the Suncorp League now understand fully what it means to be playing in, in, in an arena right. with thousands of fans shouting and the, the energy for the sport being significantly greater than, than they would experience right. in, in, in the Caribbean. Um, do you consider so many players being away on professional duties a huge plus for Jamaica's thrust to the number one spot, or does it create a problem for you because you don't have them for extended periods at home training in the way that you want them to train? Well, it can look we can look at it in two ways. So yeah, for me, that, it's yeah. good. It's really good to have them in that type of atmosphere. Yes. Well, what we want is that we want to ensure that before our competitions, the major ones, we yeah. have them before a certain time. Right. So that they can, the other girls can get a feel of them yes. and get into that atmosphere and trying to understand how they play and right. trying to understand the girls too and to see what best works with us. So definitely, um, the good thing is that they get a calendar of events so the managers overseas will know when we want them yes so it's it's just for them to be available yeah. at that time yeah the reason why I asked that just a couple of days ago we were having a football discussion here on the show right. and we were making the point that a lot of times when our overseas stars get big contracts like a Leon Bailey now in Aston Villa it is difficult for him to come back into the Jamaica national team and and flourish and shine and be comfortable in the way that you see him on television for Aston Villa because that's his club. That's yes. a team he's playing with seven days per week. Right. And Jamaica is like, no, a side team. Right. So it's part of the reason why it, I put yeah, that it, to it, you. It, yeah. it can bring a struggle. But um, when we have competitions, for example, we have an international competition mm. coming in November. Our girls finish in July, August. So it's good that they finish so early yes. so we can have them back before that yes. major competition. So when major competitions, we have to just look at the time that, they, that we need them and to ensure that that dialogue is taken place so that they can be released or yeah plus um lance you need to understand that the sunshine girls have a way of playing and yes. that for the most part does not change and so when your players overseas return to the system mm -hmm. it's very simple are, are, are you suggesting that the reggae in. boys don't have a way of playing <laughs> we're not talking about the reggae boys here's what i do want to talk about though with with sasha gay so we we've spoken a lot about the traditional format of mm -hmm. netball but I realized from the press release when you were announced as the new head coach that you have an all-encompassing job to develop Jamaica's netball. And you spoke to it as well in terms of the pathway. But Fast Five, the last time you were around, the Sunshine Girls got to the final. Let's get this clear. When Sasha Gay was co-coach, the Sunshine Girls did really well. So you do have a good track record. Sixth and fifth at the two Fast Five tournaments since you left the job? You know, it, 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 it can be a little tricky because if you look at some of the teams that are sent and, the, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe, teams. yes, and also the fact that um, the competitions are so close. So we yes. might have a major competition that we want some of the girls to go. So we have to try to build other players' capacity. So we want to send the younger ones sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that could be an, a, a problem. The fact that we are not playing Fast Five here a lot can also be an, an issue where I think Netball Jamaica will have to revisit. But what I love though is that the elite league actually encompasses a bit of the fast five yeah so it's not to its entirety the rally, the rally. no no the elite league yeah, so okay. they have zones now where you can shoot so you can shoot from close you can oh, shoot from far right. so it's not fast five yes. but they try to there incorporate it. So five that, right yeah, so that yeah. makes it good so it's just that um let me say netball jamaica is really strapped so in terms of having coaches yes to coach 
early in the season to get these girls ready, they may not be able, they're not in a position yeah. sometimes to afford the team to be training for a long period. Yes. The recent team with Sean and, 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 and Nicole, they, their preparation started very late. Yes. So those are some of the problems. They don't have the money mm -hmm. to, to take on a coach, to have these girls in training for nutrition and for mm -hmm. um, transportation, whatever. So yes, it's yes. definitely a big impact mm -hmm. where finance is in terms of allowing these girls to get the required training. So money is a big deal for us. Yeah, one of the things I would suggest is you usually have rallies, one-day rallies ahead of major tournaments in Jamaica that maybe some of those rallies could be fast five format. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Second thing is you seem to have the gift of convincing. <laughs> so maybe you could convince some of the senior players to give the fast five tournament one more go ahead of the World Cup and yes, maybe Jamaica yes. can go for the double. I mean, so, so we have a problem this year. So we have a tournament that is in November and Fast Five is in November. So we have to weigh yeah. the pros and cons. So we have an Which international, and it's not announced yet, but okay. it's going to be a home and away tour. I don't oh. think they've finished finalizing all the details. Okay, yes. And it's going to be a big one. Mm. So what do we do? Mm -hmm. Because one is the eight, and I think I'm not sure of the, the yeah. other date for the other one. And, so and that is going to yeah. be a challenge. So right I, now, we have to start our preparations, I and there's no money to pay the coaches for the Fast Five. I'm just saying, you know? <laughs> I get where you're going, but, but I would like to win Fast Five. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's a fun game. Yeah. It's exciting. Yes, yes, definitely. We'd want to win that one. Can I volunteer to coach? I mean, from once you have the skills, you come and you do, your, you, you apply, and, you know, there's a process. He, he, he has cricket and track and field skills. Oh, I know. I, I'm not sure about his, his, his netball skills. Yeah. He loves netball. <laughs> well, Sasha Gay, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and we really do wish you all the best in this job. We have Thank you. no doubt that it will be tough, but we also know that if anyone can get it done, you are one of those women um, who can do just that. So... All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Sasha Gay Henry, the new head coach of Jamaica's Sunshine Girls, and they are looking ahead to the 2027 World Cup where they're looking to snatch that gold medal for the first time ever. Stay with us. We have a lot more to come on the Sports Bank Zone, including a look at the Corporate Area Championships, which will be live on Sports Max next week, Friday and Saturday. They launched the event yesterday. That was Wednesday. And we'll have the details after this.